Welcome to Morning Prayer. I'm Phil Manson. You ever wonder why Paul talked about the resurrection twice in one sentence? In Philippians 3, 10 and 11, he said, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Are there two resurrections? I mentioned yesterday that on our calendars, Good Friday comes first and then Easter. But for believers living in this world, working out their salvation, the order is not only reversed, but it's repeated. You have Easter, power of his resurrection, Good Friday, participation in his suffering, and then Easter again, resurrection from the grave. See, the power that raised Christ from the dead is the resurrection power necessary to raise you and me from, out from the deadness of sin so that we are alive in Christ. This resurrection power is sufficient for enduring the participation in his suffering that is to come simply because of being a Christ follower. This is our present resurrection power experience. But then Paul says something interesting. And so somehow, attaining to the resurrection from the dead. This one is the future in time resurrection from the dead, which is Paul's fervent and confident hope. That's what he's living for. He wants to know Christ now but this is the res resurrection he's living for, to see and to know Christ in all of his exalted glory. But it's the phrase, and so somehow, that's a surprise. That Paul harbors a hint of doubt that he'll participate in the final resurrection? Yeah, I don't think so. But I agree with the early church father, Christendom, who believed that Paul's hesitation reflects his awareness that neither he nor the Philippian can presume upon God's grace. See, in chapter 2, Paul calls the church to work out their salvation with fear and trembling in response to God's work in them. Then in the next section, in chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, he tells the church that there is still a race to run. They can't quit, and neither can we. And so, somehow, reminds us that it is only those who continue to be conformed to Christ's obedience and suffering now who will share in Christ's resurrection to come. So don't give up. But as Paul will say a couple of verses later, press on. Let's pray together. And so, Father, you did not call us to just begin a journey with Christ. You didn't just call us to salvation and that's the end of the story. You called us to know Christ, to live in the power of his resurrection daily, to participate in his suffering becoming like him in his death. Your word says that those who endure to the end, those who endure through temptation, persecution, hardships, will also reign with you. And so, Lord, help us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. In whose name we pray. Amen. Oh, thank you for being with us this week. I look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday at 10 a.m., either in person or online. But God bless you. It's great being with you.